Happy New Year and welcome to 2021. We are so glad that you're with us this morning as we get ready to worship Jesus for the very first time in the new year. Hey, hello, good to see you. If this is your first time, why don't you put your name in the chat? We want to get to know you and give you a big wave. Come on, would you stand to your feet where you are, lift up your hands as we worship for the very first time this year, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your kingdom come, your will be 
Thank you, band, for leading us in that amazing time of worship. It's always wonderful to gather together as a family to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As you know, we're in a brand new year, and I'm just wondering, what are you believing God to do in this year? You know, this week is the very beginning of our prayer week, and I want to encourage you to be involved, to be expectant, to get ready to see what God is going to do. Come on, would you type right now in the chat what you're believing God to do this year? We know that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, think, and imagine. We're going to learn all about prayer week during church life. But before we go to church life, we're going to take some time right now to worship Jesus with our giving. In Proverbs chapter 22 verse 9, it says, The generous will themselves be blessed, and we are so thankful to be part of such a generous church. Here are a few ways you can give. Number one. Bank transfer. The account name is London Riverside Church. The account number is 101 577 49 and the sort code is 163010. Number two, online giving. Please visit www.londonriversidechurch.com forward slash giving or click the giving page on our website and donate via PayPal. Number three, phone call. If you prefer to give over the phone, then please call 07506 288 886 and have your card ready. If you are a UK taxpayer, don't forget to gift aid. For every one pound you give, we can claim back 25p from the government. If you'd like to sign up for gift aid, then scroll down to the button on the giving page and fill out a short form. Let us honor God with our finances and remain full of faith at this time. Hey guys, my name is Kendra. And my name is John. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. And this is Church Life. Starting from tomorrow until Friday, mm -hmm. we have prayer week. John, tell us the times. Mm -hmm. We've got the morning. We do at 7 to 7.30 a.m. on Zoom. Okay, and then we have the evening too. On Zoom as well from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Ah, that's good. We'd love to see you there. Yeah. So guys, don't forget to send in your prayer requests so that we can pray through them as a church throughout the prayer week starting on Monday. Now, how you do that is visit the church website, www.londonrosarchurch.com. It's on the homepage. Scroll down to the bottom and there'll be a form there as well. And Kendra, yeah. don't forget to send some praise reports in as well. Maybe what God has done in 2020 or maybe mm -hmm. what you're expecting for 2021. Yeah. 
So guys, make sure you have a phenomenal first week yes. of the new year. Mm -hmm. I'm believing it's going to be great. John, are you believing it's going to be great? Sure. A better new year indeed. Bye. Happy New Year, everybody, and I'm so excited about what's going to be coming our way this year, 2021. Now, of course, we are not meeting in person uh, right now, and I'm sure you'll appreciate that. We're staying online, uh, but we are thinking and praying particularly for those hospital staff and those involved in the caring professions, particularly at this time. And just uh, believing and standing together, uh, we we'll get through this particular stage of the pandemic. Uh, but you know, there's so much that we can live for and look forward to. And I want to share something today, which I believe is really going to put us in a great place as we head into this year. Now, a new year is really, for me, unfinished business. As we look into 2021, and we had all our plans and thoughts and ambitions for 2020, but we can't look back anymore. We need to look forward. And as we look forward, there is unfinished business that we get to accomplish in the month and this year ahead. You see, there are still promises to be realized in your life. Not only, I'm not just talking about the life of the church, but your individual lives, there are things that are still to be fulfilled. There is still, as Joshua 13 tells us, land to be taken. So I'm excited about what we can get up to in this coming year. You know, there's still families to feed. There are still teenagers that need hope and encouragement. There are still neighbors to be loved. There are still children to be raised. There's so much that we can apply ourselves to as we head into this year. Now last week, uh, Ade shared a great word about finishing strong. And that was all about finishing strong through prayer, that we get that peace and the purpose and the power through prayer. And I want to start this year not only having accomplished that we can finish strong, but also that we can start strong. I want to talk about starting strong. And yes, it's about prayer. It's about prayer again, and I make no apology for that. Prayer is so central to our faith. In fact, prayer is central to what it means to be human, to be a human being. You might think, well, not everybody prays. I'm not so sure. I think many people, because we are human, and there's a spirit in us that reaches out for something more than ourselves. So prayer is central to our lives. So I want to talk about starting strong, and that has all to do with prayer. Now, the first followers of Jesus, his first disciples, they had been following him. They had been watching the things that he did, the things that he said, the miracles that took place. And eventually we read in Luke chapter 11 that they ask him, they say these words, they say, Lord, teach us to pray. I don't know what kind of resolutions that you've been uh, sorting out for yourselves this coming week, or maybe, you, maybe you're not a fan of resolutions. Maybe you think, well, it doesn't work anyway. I'm not going to start this year. But let me tell you, here's a great thing to plan for this year, and that is the, the, simply asking the Lord to teach us to pray. I want to pray like I've never prayed before. Lord, teach us to pray. They had observed Jesus, and they realized we need to learn how he gets his prayer answered. We need to learn how to get the contentment that he has through his prayer life. And so how does Jesus answer? It says here in Luke 11 verse 2, he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father. Our Father. Now some of you know the rest of that example prayer, but let us just focus in on that today. This is revolutionary. Jesus says, when you pray, pray, our Father. Father. You see, in the Old Testament and the Jewish faith, they were very used to hearing about the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God that our fathers and our ancestors served. But Jesus spoke of his father. He said, my father and your father. Jesus was revolutionary in speaking about God and a communication with God as father. So the first main point I want to make today is this. Pray to your father. Pray to your Father. You see, prayer without relationship is simply a religious observance. Prayer without relationship is just hoping that you're doing the right thing and maybe someone's listening and if you're good enough, you might even get an answer. Prayer outside of relationship is pretty empty. But prayer out of relationship, when you have a conversation with somebody that you have a relationship with, that is a whole different dynamic. And Jesus says you need to pray when you pray, pray our Father. 
We get a bit more of an insight to this in John's Gospel, in chapter 16, as Jesus is wrapping up his time on earth and he's sharing some important principles and important, actually opening the eyes of the disciples to what he has really been accomplishing. And in John chapter 16, verse 23, it says, In that day you will no longer ask me for anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. Jesus says some very profound words here. He says, you, you, can, uh, the, you can ask whatever you ask in my name. If you ask the Father, whatever you ask in my name, and it will take place. He will answer. Now, sometimes the understanding of talking to God is a bit like trying to speak to someone who's in charge. You know, if I decided today that I wanted to talk to the prime minister, then it's not as easy as picking up the phone. Well, you can pick up the phone, but I haven't got his direct line. So you need to talk to someone who maybe will pass you on to someone else. And maybe that person will pass you on to that secretary. And maybe, maybe, maybe you would get to the PA. I don't know. Maybe you could get that far, depending on your name and what you've been up to and how well you're known. But it's not so easy to get to people in position, to people in power. Sometimes we think of God as someone that maybe someone else can ask for us. You know, someone, maybe someone can put a good word in for you. I wonder if some of our prayer requests sometimes, it's like, well, I can't really ask God. Maybe you could put a word in because you speak to him more than I do. Does that sound familiar? Often our understanding of speaking to God is that someone else needs to do it for us. Maybe someone can put a good word in for us. But when Jesus spoke these words, he had been speaking to the Father on the disciples' behalf. But now he says to them, now you can speak to him directly. Now you can talk directly to God for yourselves. You don't have to go via anybody else. You can speak to the Father yourself. In other words, those who belong and follow Jesus, belong to Jesus and follow Jesus, are now granted the same access to the Father as Jesus had on earth. And if you followed the Gospels at all, you'll realise that Jesus didn't do, really do anything he didn't see the Father doing. In other words, he didn't really go in any direction or speak any wisdom that he hadn't already received from the Father. And yet he says to us, his followers, you have the same access. You can speak to your Father. And so we have this phrase, we, you may have often heard it, it said, you may have prayed it yourself. People often pray, in Jesus' name. People often say, well, finish their prayer, in Jesus' name. Let me tell you, this is not something that we tag on the end of a prayer. In fact, you don't even have to say it in your prayer. This isn't some kind of magic formula, well, if I do it in Jesus' name, maybe it will work. What does that mean, in Jesus' name? Jesus says, if you ask the Father in my name, in other words, out of the, the fact that you belong to me, out of the fact that we are in relationship, you can ask what you need to ask. That's what it means to pray in Jesus' name. It's not a special formula or a special way of praying that somehow seals the deal. No, no, no. It's praying out of that relationship. You belong to him and you are praying for his glory. Now, I know this can be a little bit confusing. To think of praying to God as your father may be, for some of us, a little bit disorientating. Now, I don't mean to... Uh, pronounce any judgment in what I say now but some of us we may not have known our father we may not have known we may have known our father but he wasn't very present he may not have been at home or he may have been at home but it didn't feel like he was interested or even available for us and we're not the first people to misunderstand what it means for God to be our father in fact in Luke chapter 15 Jesus tells a story of two sons uh, some of you know the story. One of the younger sons says, look, I need my inheritance. I'm fed up with living here on the farm. I'm going to go into the city. I'm going to spend the money. And that's what he did. Or well, he didn't tell the whole story to his dad. He just got the money first. Then he went and did what he had to do. And so he gets to the end of his money. And when he gets to the end of his money, he gets to the end of his friends and he gets to the end of the fun and ends up pretty hungry. And he decides, I'm going to head home and, and, and I'm going to apologize. And I'm not worthy to be a son, but maybe I could be a servant in my dad's house. And there's another son, the older son, who was uh, not the so-called rebellious one, but rather the one that was uh, ticking all the boxes and making sure he was behaving himself. But it's interesting because when the father throws a party for his son who returns, the older son is not happy. It says in the, in, in the story that Jesus tells, it says that he stayed out in the field. He didn't want to come in and enjoy the party. And when he finally spoke to his dad, he said, hey, this guy's wasted your money. 
but you throw him a party. What have you ever done for me? You see, in this story, we have a picture of a misunderstanding of who Father God really is. He was, he was ticking the boxes. He was trying to be the, do the right thing. And he said, you didn't care. You didn't do anything for me. And, and the father simply replies, well, you didn't ask me. Everything I have is yours. Well, that's quite a statement. Everything I have is yours. In other words, the, the, the older brother had the wrong idea of who his father was. He had misunderstood who his father was and what he was really like. And actually, he'd missed out on so much of life because he'd had this wrong picture of how much his father loved him and how much his father was there for him. And that's so easy for us sometimes, even in prayer, which is, is like breathing for human beings. It's what we're made to do. And yet we stand back from our father and say, oh, I'm not so sure if I can talk. I'm not so sure if he's interested. I'm not so sure that he'll be interested in what I have to say, what I have to ask. Even the younger son, he said, oh, I'm no longer worthy. And he'd made up his speech and he was going to be all kind of diplomatic. You know, I mean, maybe you haven't had this situation in your life, but maybe you can all remember when you're trying to ask your parents if you can stay out later. And you've got to pick the right moment to ask because, you know, this could all, you know, you could do the washing up first and then ask if you can stay out later because you've got to be a bit diplomatic about this. You're going to get something that you haven't had before. And, and so we all know what it's like to try and arrange things so somehow we might get the answer we want. And the younger uh, son was also trying to do that. But the father just looked right through it, grabbed him, embraced him, put a cloak upon him, put fresh clothes on him, put a ring on his finger, did the whole works and threw the party. So often we miss who our Father God really is. Jesus says here, what he will give you, my Father will give you whatever you ask. It says there in John 16 verse 23, whatever you ask. Is that really true? Let's be honest. Do we, is that really true? That the Father will give us whatever we ask because we are in Christ. In fact, it says in verse 27 that the Father will do this, Jesus says, because the Father himself loves you. The Father himself loves you. You see the invitation we have right at the beginning of this year is to pray but it's not simply a, a kind of, well, I suppose I should pray because that's what you're supposed to do. But no, pray to your father because he loves you and he will do what you ask as we pray in Jesus' name. Not because you've added that name, the name of Jesus onto your prayer, but because you are in relationship with Father God, because you are following Jesus, because you belong to him. What you ask, you are asking in his name. Ask your father, pray to your father. It's an amazing thing to be what the Bible calls in Christ. In Philippians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul puts it like this. He says, and I want to be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. Paul talks about having a faith in Christ and the righteousness that comes from God is on the basis of faith. It's not on the things that I've done. It's not on the things that I haven't done. It's the fact that I trust and believe in him. And that is accounted to me as righteousness. I have that righteousness that's not my own doing. My right standing before God is not because of all that I have done or not done. It's because of what Christ has done on my behalf. And so it says in James chapter 5, Verse 16, this is a verse as we head into our week of prayer, our prayer week next week. Uh, this is a verse that we're, we're very much focusing on. It says in James 5 verse 16, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now I know what you're thinking. If you've read that before, you're thinking, I'm not sure if I'm righteous enough. Where does that come from? I know where it comes from because that's how we think, right? We think, well, am I good enough? The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Well, the scripture says, we've just read, our righteousness is in Christ. We are in Christ and we have his righteousness. In other words, we have that right standing before God. And therefore, our prayers are powerful and effective. In fact, if we read on in James chapter 5, it goes on, next verse, verse 17, speaks of the prophet Elijah. Notice this, verse 17. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced 
its crops. That's the story we can read of in 1 Kings chapter 17, chapter 18. But notice here, it says Elijah was a human being even as we are. Can we just stop there for a minute, just figure, because we, we, we read of different people in the scripture and we think, well, they're just kind of different somehow. They've kind of got that connection with God that I could never have. Wait a minute, a human being like us, like you and me, the prayers of a righteous person are powerful and effective. You see, there's an amazing thing that takes place when we begin to pray to our Father. It's amazing things start to take place as we begin to pray in this manner because it's like we've got one foot placed in this world, placed in the situation, placed in the trouble that we face, placed in, in uh, uh, sickness maybe or such difficulty. We've got our foot well and truly placed in the human uh, need and yet we place another foot in heaven. We place another foot in his kingdom and as we pray these two things come together that his healing can come in our need, that his answers can come in our despair. It's an amazing thing when we pray. It says here that it's powerful and effective that that side of the earth our earthly existence and that human struggle that we find ourselves in but the other foot is planted well and truly in the kingdom of God and we can see the two come together in prayer that's Elijah's experience according to the book of James in chapter uh, five here it can be our experience too let me encourage you pray to your father as we start strong at the beginning of 2021. You know, when it comes to starting strong, sometimes there's a real challenge to get started. I know I can preach about prayer. You're thinking, yeah, but oh, I just can't get going on this. I just can't. I try and then it doesn't work. Sometimes we've tried before and we haven't been able to keep it up. We, we sometimes think, well, I, just, I don't know. It's my thing. Listen, the other th not only do we pray to our Father, but we pray with focus. Sometimes it's simple focus that helps us continue in prayer. You know, if you're trying to give up something, some of you are doing it. I know, hey, we're only a few days in, but go for it. You know, you're trying to give up doing something. But that's your resolution. But when you choose to give up that chocolate, it doesn't help when you keep looking at it. When you choose to give up whatever you shouldn't be eating, it doesn't help when you keep checking out what you're not allowed to eat. That doesn't help. You need a new focus. You need to focus in on what you can do, on those delicious vegetables that you are allowed to eat, on those amazingly healthy snacks that they've told you you can. You need to focus in and start enjoying what you can do. Now, when it comes to prayer, we need to focus in on what God has already said. If you're not sure how to pray or what to pray or what you should pray for, is that right, is that wrong? Simply get his word. Open the scripture, read a verse, Pray that verse into your existence, into your life. Begin, begin to see what God has for you and what he wants to do through you. This brings a focus simply to open the scripture, to recognize that he loves you, to recognize that he's got plans and purposes for our lives, to recognize that you've been invited into a bigger uh, project than your life. It's something amazing that God is doing on planet Earth, to realize that he will give you love even for your enemies that you could even pray for them and for those that you struggle to forgive. Wow, we can get focused as we open the scripture. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus says these words. He says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Well, that's a good word for us right now. Every day has enough trouble of its own. So what does Jesus say? He says, seek first the kingdom. Seek first his kingdom. If we jump back into the book of James, James chapter 4, he says these words, you do not have because you do not ask God. Wow, that, mean, that is a statement that's underlined in my Bible. You do not have because you do not ask God. Can we ask him now? Can we begin to ask him? Actually, James goes on to say, when you do ask, you, you don't receive sometimes because you ask with the wrong motives that you might spend it on your own pleasures. In other words, as we draw close to God, we need to, he wants to work something in us. You say, well, God doesn't answer our prayers. No, he is answering your prayers, but he's shaping your prayers. He's helping you understand his will and his purpose. That's why Jesus said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will 
be done. That's what God is working into us. Now, don't let this put you off praying. Every one of us, uh, we've known, those of us who are children, we know when they ask for something and we think, no, that's not quite the right time for that. You know, when that 10 year old wants the keys to your car, you're saying, well, that's a great idea, but not just yet. Yeah, you, when, when they decide that they're going to cook dinner, uh, you're thinking, well, I'd love you to cook dinner, but can we just, uh, just do some basics first? Can we just get the cereal in the bowl? That would be great. Let's start there. You know, sometimes we ask things, but we don't get mad at our kids because they're asking something they're not ready for. We don't get so mad because we know the bigger picture. God doesn't get mad at us for our, for our prayers that sometimes he's thinking, well, you don't quite see what's going on here, but he'll listen in and he'll guide our steps. He'll guide our thoughts and we'll begin to pray your kingdom come and your will be done. Let me encourage you this year. Pray to your father. Pray with focus. If you're not sure what to focus in on, then just start to get into the Bible, start to read some of the scripture and start to pray what you're reading. And that would start to pray for his kingdom to come, for his will to be done in our lives. So we pray to our Father, we pray with focus. And let me just mention one other thing, London Riverside Church, one other thing I want to share with you this morning. And this is something we don't talk about so often, but not only pray with focus, but what about pray and fast? What about pray and fast? Fasting, oh, I know we don't speak about it so much. So I know some of us are, are here are, are very uh, competent fasters. We, 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 we regularly fast. For others, it's like, what do you mean fasting? What do I have to do? Is that something to get extra points with God if you go without food? What is fasting? It's simply to abstain from food. That's, that's a very simple explanation. To fast is to go without food. So in the Old Testament, for example, they would call a day of fasting or there'd be a festival or, or a national tragedy or something they were grieving about and they would call a fast. And from, uh, from sunrise to sunset, they would go without their food. But listen, if you fast, fasting is not an attempt to get God's attention. He's your father. You already have his attention. I need to say that again. You already have his attention. Fasting is not trying to get God's attention. Fasting is giving him your attention. That's what happens when we fast. We are giving God our attention. Those things that, that, that drive us, that, that, well, the things we're dependent on, the things we're feeding on, our food, those cheeseburgers, they can wait. That, that jollof rice, that spicy chicken, it can wait. Oh, that bar of chocolate, it can wait. Because what we're doing, although there's nothing wrong with those things, we are giving God our attention. We're not trying to get his attention. When we fast, we are giving him our attention attention now sometimes we can fast other things maybe maybe you need to fast your social media for a day imagine that imagine if the world would continue and you didn't know what was on your newsfeed Let, hey whatever it is that is we're dependent upon it might be our music it might it could be anything food is always a good one because food well you know when you haven't eaten right but there are other things where you say okay i'm going to fast that now i'm going to go without that not to get god's attention but so I can give him my full attention. Go for it. And listen, let's not be too su uh, super spiritual, superstitious even about fasting. Be sensible about it. I remember one time uh, I was uh, serving in Austria and I had a translator with me and I didn't know my translator had been fasting. So we got to the end of the preach and my translator pretty much nearly killed over and someone had to come and catch them and we actually swapped translators in the middle of a preach I didn't realize they'd been fasting I didn't realize they weren't really I didn't have the energy levels for what we were doing and uh, listen it, you can tell people that you are fasting the scripture says to not make a big show of it Jesus says don't go making a big show about fasting uh, you don't need to be telling everybody but you know be practical friends let's let, you can tell people can you still you do your job if you're fasting let's be really practical here don't go heading into a fast and realizing that you have now passed out at lunchtime because of the nature of your job that's not going to help anybody uh, if you've got health issues then do check get professional advice and make, don't go getting yourself into trouble here but it's a wonderful thing to give our attention as much as we can to God through fasting, maybe even a partial fast. I encourage you as we head into this week, what, 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 is there a day, is there something that you could fast through this week to give God your full attention? I'm so sure, I'm convinced that we can start strong 
in 2021. I know there's restrictions, we're mindful of that. And we are praying for those that are really on the front line and having to tackle so much of the difficulty of this pandemic. But I'm believing all the same as we look into this year that we can start strong in prayer. And I encourage you to pray to your Father, pray with focus and and pray and fast. Consider praying and fasting at some time during this coming week. We're going to be praying on Zoom in the morning at 7 o'clock. We're going to be praying on Zoom on the evening at 7.30. And, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a great missionary a couple of centuries back. He put it like this. He, he was a great missionary to India and translated a lot of uh, the Bible into uh, some of the Eng Indian uh, languages. And he said these words, expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. How about you this year? Can you expect great things from God and attempt great things for God? You know, part of our expectation is simply coming to him in faith, coming in prayer and knowing that our Father will do that which we ask of him. As Jesus says, whatever you ask of him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we find ourselves at the beginning of a new year. We find ourselves rejoicing in the fact that you've kept us and you watch over us and that we are, we are in your care, Lord God. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we, we know that there's so much still to be done. We know, Lord, that there's other things that we need to step into and things that need to take place in our lives and in the life of our church. And so, Father God, we commit ourselves to prayer now. We want to start strong, Lord God. I pray for each one listening and watching today that you would spark something. Your spirit in them would, would, would come alive to that prayer, the prayer of faith, that even like Elijah, a person like us, that we can pray and see it happen. So, Father, we thank you for that ultimate privilege of knowing you and of being able to talk to you. And we thank you for that promise that Jesus gives us, that you'll do that which we ask of you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. i
Thank you, Gawain, for that encouraging word as we head into prayer week this week. Be encouraged. You want to be involved in that. And you want to be online on that. And you want to be expectant to see what God can do in your life. You know, maybe you were listening today and you were interested in making Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. John chapter 3 verse 16 teaches us that God loved the world so much that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for our sins. Friend, I want to let you know that God loves you, he cares about you, he's concerned about you, and he's simply a prayer away. If you want to say that prayer, a prayer of commitment towards Jesus, would you just repeat after me right now? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Today, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to give me a new heart and a new start. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer today, we are so pumped and excited for you. And we want to give you as much information as we can about following Jesus as Lord and Savior. So why don't you go to our Jesus page down at the bottom and tell us all about it. We can't wait to tell you more about Jesus. Thank you so much for being with us this Sunday. We hope that you enjoyed the service and we can't wait to be involved in prayer week this week. Make sure you're involved in that. It's going to be great. Hey, God bless you. See you next week. Take care.